Our financial series picks back up this morning with certified financial planner Roxanne Flazar. Now her motto is that you work hard for your money, but in reality your money should be working hard for you. Today we're going to talk about fixed income investments. Roxanne, thank you for being back with me today. Thanks Jenna, it's great to be back. Let's start today by talking about investment basics. What do we need to know about investing? Well, Jenna, essentially you can't leave your money if you want financial security sitting in a, under a mattress not having any opportunity for growth. So if you're looking for growth, there are two basic premises of investing. You're either going to be lending money to people or you're going to be buying something. What does lending money mean, Roxanne? Well, lending money means going ahead and giving a financial institution the use of your money over a period of time and receiving income for that benefit. So where do we start? Well, where we start are with the safe, secure kinds of investments that people think of. I think of things like savings accounts, checking accounts, money market funds, savings bonds. Those are all what we call cash equivalents, Jenna. So those investments earn interest and they can be easily turned into cash. How safe mm -hmm. are the accounts? Well, if you're talking about bank accounts and money market accounts, banks, for example, the deposits are insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, for up to $250,000 per account per bank. If you're talking about money market mutual funds, those are usually covered by an institution called SIPIC. It stands for Securities Investor Protection Corporation. And those will be covered for $500,000 or more. So they're safe and secure. Are there any risks to the accounts? Well, you know, the, the major risk to those kinds of cash equivalent accounts, Jenna, is inflation. If, in fact, you're earning less income than the cost of current goods and services, then, in fact, you're losing purchasing power, which means if you're, if you're looking at money for the long term, you're, in fact, becoming poorer if you have to pay more than you can earn in income on your investment account. Now, what mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a bond exactly? Well, what happens, Jenna, is let's talk about people who are retired today. The average ca cash equivalent account, let's say a bank account, is paying less than one half of 1% right now. Inflation's running at about 2%. So you can see you've got a loss of purchasing power. This has really affected people primarily who are in fixed income retirees. Those folks are looking at earning, again, a very low rate of return, less than one half of a percent, and they're looking to achieve a higher return so that they can, you know, obviously be able to afford to keep up with inflation. Uh, so many of them turn to something called bonds. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit more about a bond? Yeah, a bond is essentially a loan. You're going to loan money to, uh, say, a government, a city or a town or to a government agency or even to a corporation. What you're going to get back, Jenna, for that loan that you're making is a fixed rate of return and ultimately you're going to get your principal back. So you're loaning money for a certain period of time at a fixed rate of return. Is there anything else our viewers need to know this morning about bonds? Well, there's a lot to know about bonds. As a matter of fact, Jenna, we're going to talk about bonds for the next couple of sessions. Uh, bonds are perceived to be safe but in fact, they can fluctuate in value. They can go up or down. What you want is to loan your money to an entity that you feel can afford to pay you back. You want to look at the credit quality of the issuer of the bond. You know, this was a major issue, Jenna, just recently. Um, it was in the news. The U.S. government was talking about not being able to uh, pay interest on its bonds. And we were all talking about the debt ceiling. Of course, mm -hmm. this is just something that happens, so it's fresh in people's minds. People who had loaned money to the U.S. government, whether it was U.S. citizens or if it was other governments, were very concerned that we might default on our bonds, not be able to pay back the interest nor the principal in its entirety that they were promised. So when you talk about bonds, credit quality is really important. If we're loaning money to safe and secure entities, we feel better about receiving our interest back um, and will actually pay a lower rate of interest for a safe and secure kind of issuer. Mm -hmm. 
let's take, for example, an entity like loaning money to a corporation. Johnson & Johnson has the highest credit ratings. So if we buy a bond from Johnson & Johnson, we're going to earn a lower rate of interest if we, than if we were to loan it to a newer company mm -hmm. that didn't have that kind of stability and the kind of financial resources behind it. The bonds of lower rated entities have to pay a higher rate of interest. So those are things to think about when you're thinking of bonds. And as mm -hmm. you mentioned, Roxanne, mm -hmm. there is so much to know about bonds. Mm -hmm. There's so much to learn yeah. about bonds. So Correct. we will be discussing this more in the future. Mm -hmm. What are we specifically mm -hmm. gonna talk about next month when you're on? Next month we're gonna be talking about how bonds actually work, how they return interest and principal to you, and whether that rate of return on your investment can appreciate over and above the rate of return that you stated on the bond or depreciate. So we're going to talk about how bond values fluctuate. Great. Well, I look forward to your return, Roxanne. Thank you for being on this morning. Thanks so much, Jen. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thank you, everybody, for mm -hmm. tuning in and joining me today. I'll be right back mm -hmm. here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and back mm -hmm. at 8.30 a.m. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.